Ready? Yep, let's go. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the homestead. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike. And I'm Liz. And we made a massive mistake when we did our DIY well pump installation. So today we are trying to fix it. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to pull the pump out of the well to fix this problem. So the first step is gonna be shut the valve off and kill the power. Back when Mike and I were working on the water line, we installed a couple of valves that control different zones. So we already shut off the valve that controls the zone we're working on. So now we just got to kill the power. Next step is to bleed the pressure off of this zone. Huh, no pressure. <laughs> Perfect. Now that we're ready to work on it, we have to take the cap off the well to access the inside. I have to know what's up with your boots. These are my summer boots, safety sandals, <laughs> right? Right. Mike wanted his cat boots to match my cat boots. <laughs> it's about as close as he got. Now that we have the well cap off, we're going to snip these wires we have a one inch NPT pipe. I'm gonna lower that down to hook onto the pitless to raise the pump out. So the big mistake that Liz and I ended up making when we installed our pump on our own was we used this cheap yellow rope. And the problem with this cheap yellow rope is I don't know what kind of dyes are in this. This isn't rated to be sitting in your water. So our goal today is to pull the pump out, put some steel cable on it as a safety chain Hopefully it makes the water a little bit safer to drink. We're gonna cut these wires. We got our pitless puller attached. Hopefully we can pop this right out, pull all of this uh, pump assembly out, and then we'll go through the whole setup for you guys. It should be about 50 feet of pipe and wire. See if we can get it. I hope so. Now you're going to grab this. Okay. I'm going to slowly bend it down to you. Mm -hmm. so grab the pipe and walk it out. Grab the pipe. Walk it out at the end of the pipe thing. You're fine. Slow down. Pay attention to what you're doing. You're not going to be able to pull on that much. Hang on. Going. You went too far. Right there. Okay. Okay, so All right. Cool. It's always a workout. Yeah. Ah. So. Didn't really go as planned when that uh, puller popped off, so we'll have to see what's going on there. That actually, we got very lucky with that. All right guys, so we figured once we have this out, we'd explain the whole setup to you. It's really straightforward once you kind of understand the few parts that there are. Starting at the bottom, we have the motor. This is the electric motor that runs the pump. Right in here, there's a couple fins, and that is actually what pumps the water. Then you go up here to your torque arrestor, and this is kind of what keeps the pump centered when it turns on and off. This is a very strong pump, so as this thing cycles on and off, there's a pretty good kick to it. So this helps prevent anything coming loose or banging against the side of the well or anything like that. 
As you can see, we have our yellow rope, which we're gonna be replacing with the cable. That's attached over here to just an eyelet as a safety point. And then our wire comes out and there is this special weld tape that you wanna use if you're doing this. You can see we ran out and used duct tape. The duct tape did seem to last, but as far as like adhesiveness, this green tape is the way to go. And then this wire just runs all the way up the length of, of the pipe. This is about 50 feet of pipe. We'll run you guys up to the top. So there is a check valve at the very top of the pump, as well as a check valve right here on the downside of a pitless. This is just our pitless, guys. This allows the well to be removed without digging up your water line. You know, that pitless sits about four feet down beneath the earth. So this is just a simple device that holds pressure and lets you remove everything. As you can see, we always have two hose clamps throughout the entire setup. You don't want to be relying on just one to hold this pressure. This is sitting at about 60 pounds PSI when it is full of pressure. So it's a pretty decent amount of pressure. You don't want to be blowing any lines. All right, now that we went over the whole system, we're going to take this yellow rope off and replace it with the cable. What we're replacing that cheap yellow rope with is eighth inch cable wire rope, I guess. So we're gonna attach this with two clamps down here on the eyelet. And we'll run it out of the well and attach another eyelet on the top so it can't fall through. Um, should work out much better than that rope. I'm going to put this one on the opposite way of the first one. Got that all rigged up and squared away. I think the next step is going to be attach our puller nice and securely and lower this thing down the well. I'm putting this cable loop and clamp on the other end as well. If this thing were to ever accidentally slip and fall down the well, it'd be a bad day here on the homestead. So our goal is to have something abrupt, something big, if it does start sliding through one of our hands, even though it is gonna shred it once we catch it, at least it's not gonna fall all the way down. Okay, that's hooked up. Here we go. There's a sleeve in this well, and it makes it very difficult to get the pump in sometimes into the, the filter. There's a, this well is very sandy, so we gotta get it inside that big sleeve. Oh wow, that was the easiest it's ever gone in. Before we put the well cap on, we wanna get the power back on and open up the valve to that zone, pressurize everything, make sure we don't have any leaks down at the pitless. 
All right, guys, we got everything hooked up. I have opened the valve to this zone over here. We do not appear to have any leaks at our pit list, so Liz is going to turn that on. We're gonna make sure the pump cycles and everything works. So once that runs itself to a low enough pressure, about 40 PSI, we should see this pump kick on. Probably we'll be able to hear it. Let's see what happens. You can kind of see the water level on the side there. Once that pump kicks on, that should drop. All right, everything seems to be going just fine. Last steps are going to be to get the cap back on this little silicone to seal up any gaps. Then we'll go up to the house, make sure it's holding pressure, make sure we didn't, you know, nickel line that's underneath the water that we can't hear leaking or something, right? That is exactly how you want to fix your pump, but don't make the same mistake that we did. Use one of these cables or wire rope. I just really had zero faith in the dies and the quality of the rope that was lowered and just constantly sitting in our well. So mm -hmm. I think this will be a big upgrade um, and a nice peace of mind. Right, now that we're running this well a lot more this summer, it's nice to not have all that like synthetic material in there something that we can kind of rely on a little bit better quite a bit stronger right yeah so if you guys are new to the homestead we want to take you on a garden tour and even if you're not new let's go on a garden tour yeah let's do it okay you guys now that we're done with that project we just wanted to give you a little update on how our garden is doing when we say we got a lot of rain we mean we got a lot of rain especially for this area i think we got over three inches within 48 hours just earlier this week and now the sun is finally coming out. Seems like the last two weeks, um, hardly any sun whatsoever. Been pretty cold. We'd wake up in the morning like 47 degrees. And that's pretty cold and like wet for mid-June up here in North Idaho. So it's not a terrible thing. It definitely helps with the fire situation that we always run into towards the end of the summer. But it definitely doesn't help with the early season gardening. Seems like it takes quite a while for things to really take off. So I'm gonna show you what we got going on and the progress that we've made. All right, here we go. So try not to judge us too much. This is Mike and I's first year actually having a good sized garden. We got the seeds in the ground. The garden isn't as level as it needs to be. When Mike went ahead and basically took this whole mountainside out, made this flat, he got all this topsoil out of here and there's lots of like dips that really aren't ideal. I'll show you that over there. We have some corn popping up. They tell you knee high by the 4th of July when it comes to, to uh, corn. So I have a feeling it's not gonna be knee high here in the next few weeks, but you never know. So that's corn, it's coming up okay. A lot of this stuff, nothing's really popped up. We haven't had much sun. Let's see, we have some pumpkins here. Pumpkins are actually probably doing the best. Let's see here, peas. Peas are actually doing really, really well. Um, hopefully, now that the sun is supposed to be shining for the next couple of weeks, um, things will really start to take off. That's what we're hoping. We've got some onions here, still really tiny. Don't know how they'll do. We're just gonna have to see. I mean, it's been kind of a fun process. Um, we have some potatoes that are popping up over here. Not a ton of stuff. This is what I mean by the garden is not level. Um, this is what we have been dealing with. A lot of rain. As of right now, nothing has died yet. Like these pumpkins were underwater. These little pumpkins here that you can see. Um, but the sun is drying them up pretty quickly. The tomatoes are tiny, um, I, which is really unfortunate. That's kind of what we were looking the most forward to, or at least I was. Not very big. We'll see. This is cabbage underwater. Quite unfortunate pumpkin underwater we'll see i mean i think the sun could dry it up but we're just gonna wait and wait and tell cabbage is actually doing fairly good probably the best out of everything 
a few of our tomatoes are doing okay. These are ones that we purchased from the nursery. Not doing great, but it is what it is. So cabbages, we have some cantaloupe over there doing all right. Our raspberries are doing great. We have quite a few raspberry plants up here on the hill. Peppers are doing all right. I've got a bunch of summer and winter squash right over there. It's not doing great. It's hanging in there. We'll see what happens now that the sun is shining. We ended up putting quite a few stuff in pots because the way that we laid out the garden isn't 100% ideal and it's definitely not like a permanent situation, but it was just kind of a first year. We were in a little bit of a rush to get a garden going. Um, so that's what that is right now. A lot of this stuff is beets and corn in the pots, which is kind of cool. We've got some fever few right here. That's actually doing really good. These are all cherry tomatoes, different varieties. You can see that they're tiny. I don't have super high hopes that we're gonna get any cherry tomatoes this year, which really sucks, um, but I guess it is what it is. Like I said, now that the sun is shining, we'll see kind of what happens. Hopefully this stuff can really start to take off. We will see. Everything in the pots is actually doing like 10 times better than the stuff in the ground. Um, so I'll show you what we got going on in the greenhouse and with the pots. Sunflowers are all doing great. These are zinnias, um, not doing bad now that the sun is shining. I have some black eyed Susans that I'm really hoping grow, will kind of vine up, super pretty. These are cardinal climbers, which is also kind of a climbing vine plant. I'm excited about those. All these flowers are doing really good. Nasturtium, absolutely loving it. Let's go inside. Lots more sunflowers, all doing great. Our little herb herb situation is going well. That's basil. We got those at the nursery. That's why they're so big. Um, this is basil that we got from a friend from Seed. So it's actually doing okay. Have some chives here. Um, this is all lettuce. It's actually growing really well, which is cool. Lots and lots of basil. That's kind of the only herb that has really taken off. So that's cool. As with everything, it's obviously a work in progress, but we're happy to have some stuff popping up. We might not get the harvest at the end of the year that everybody would love, obviously, but we're going to get where we're going to get and we are happy, we're learning, and it's been a fun process. I'm super thankful we got the greenhouse put up when we did. It just means that we can have stuff grown in here all summer. Our plan is to hopefully make it so that this is an all weather greenhouse and we'll see maybe one day we'll be able to grow stuff through the winter. But since it's our first year, we have a long ways to go. We know that, um, but so far we're loving it. go so right now we actually have eight hens um and six eggs so two more aren't quite laying yet I'm sure they'll be soon All the irises finally bloomed within the last week. It's interesting, the irises had come and died already before this time last year and they only just bloomed. I got lots of sunnies planted in here. Can't wait for that. Well, that actually went mostly to plan. Mostly to plan? Yeah, it doesn't happen like that very often. No. We're getting better. Uh, things are getting better, like a little bit more smoothly. The, work, the more we work together, for right. sure. Um, and that went that went well. Nothing went wrong. I think that you especially are going to be a lot happier now that we have that plastic um, rope out of our drinking water. The yeah. metal is a lot stronger too. Yeah, I agree. I was not real keen on that plastic. I think it's like a nylon synthetic rope. Um, it actually did seem to hold up okay under the water. It wasn't as deteriorated as I was anticipating. But like I was saying earlier, it was just, I had it in my head that there were some dyes in there and who knows what went into making that rope. So I do feel better that it's just metal in there now, essentially. Right. 
you know so a little bit of peace of mind there and then hopefully you guys also enjoyed the tour of the garden yeah the garden is coming along really nice and super happy that yeah really nice i'm yeah. super happy that the sun has actually come out now yeah it's beautiful so we appreciate you guys watching if you haven't already we have a little subscribe button up here and we also picked out that video for you check it out and we'll see you later bye guys thank you Martin Johnson. I was thinking it right at the yeah. end. It's like, oh, I wonder if we have enough room. We kind of do. Yeah.